In the following slides, um, we will take a look at some of the uh, most rudimentary psychophysical experiments to have an overview of how psychophysical experiment is run. But even for the uh, simplest psychophysical experiment, it can be quite complex to understand. So we will dissect the structure of a psychophysical experiment into multiple components, starting from the type of stimulus used in a typical psychophysical experiment. So, um, in general, psychophysics is a heavily stimulus driven, and because vision is such a complex process, it is impossible to study every aspect of our visual perception all at once. So, the study of vision is usually broken down into uh, sub processes such as motion, depth, or size to reduce the millions of variables that may affect our vision to a few manageable ones, um, as is exemplified in the sample of psychophysical stimuli here. So, um, in studying vision, electronic display technology has been extensively used. So it would be useful to go over some of the basic terms used in that context. So um, in this digital, uh, digital age, uh, a pixel stands for picture element, which is the very basic unit of any digitally created images. Here, the image of a swimmer on the left is made up of a 256 by 256 pixel array, which contains about uh, 65,000 pixels. Usually, the, the individual pixels making up an image are so small that they cannot be resolved individually by the bare eyes. Uh, so typically they blend together to form continuous tone for the image. The image on the right is the uh, magnified region enclosed by the red box from the left image, which is the white spot on the right swimming goggle. So in this blow up, uh, blown up image, uh, you can see the individual square pixels and the numbers in each pixel represent uh, the brightness values ranging from 1 to 256, where 1 represents black and 256 represents white. As you can see, um, an image is just a distribution of intensity values across a two-dimensional surface made up of pixels. As such, um, any image you see on a screen or display, uh, you can think of it as just a bunch of numbers representing gray levels or colors. So here is an example of a black and white image only made up of grayscale numbers assigned to each corresponding pixel to be painted. So even from the sea of numbers, you probably be able to see some structure looking like a face and indeed this is a picture of einstein as you can see uh, the image quality here is not very good and we say this image is pixelated because you can literally see the square pixels especially when you look closely around where his color is um, uh, where you can see the jagged boundary so this happens um, because this image contains a limited number of pixels compared to the size of the image. And this is what happens when you are disappointed at the blown up image with low pixel resolution. Like in digital display, um, we also have a pixel-like structure in our retina, uh, which are the photoreceptors. So as you probably learned already, uh, human retina contains two types of photoreceptors, rods and cones. And if we look at closely uh, the fovea, three types of cones are densely packed, each of which are sensitive to red, green, and blue colors, which are illustrated with corresponding colors here. 
So the picture on the right uh, represents the magnified view of a photoreceptor mosaic in fovea. So when an image falls on the retina, each photoreceptor simply signals the retinal illuminance and wavelength of the respective parts of the image. So photoreceptors can be thought of as dynamic pixels, signaling intensity and color of an image. Probably inspired by the biological retina, the modern day digital displays adopted a similar concept in producing image on the screen. So if you look under the flat panel surface, you can find a layer of pixels composed of red, green, and blue elements like this. And each element can be independently controlled by electric signals to produce desired color and luminance. When we are talking about the display resolution, we generally think about the absolute number of pixels the display has. So it is typically quoted as width by height uh, with the units and pixels. So for example, 1024, um, so this, oh, there's no 1024, but 1024 by 768 means the display has 1024 pixels across and 768 pixels vertically. Um, in the last 10 years or so, the pixel resolution of a digital display has dramatically increased from the standard definition of um, so 960 by 540 to the point where 8,000 pixels, so 8K uh, pixels can be packed in horizontally. So of course, the more you have, uh, the better picture quality you'll get, but that is only true when you consider the number of pixels relative to the physical display size. So what really determines the display uh, resolution is the pixel density measured in pixels per inch or PPI, meaning how many pixels are squeezed in a unit inch, either vertically or horizontally. And typically, we only care about one of the dimensions, assuming that a pixel is perfectly square. And typically, it is the width of a display. So for many of you who use Apple product, um, you probably heard about the retina display uh, the Apple has been boasting about. So the uh, retina display is now a registered trademark of their display, um, claiming that human eyes cannot distinguish each individual pixel uh, due to the high density of pixels in the retina display. However, uh, the pixel density of a retina display is nowhere near to human cone mosaic density around fovea. As you can see from this picture, uh, the square um, on the right shows nine pixels from the Apple's new uh, 6000 retina display. So each red, green, blue pixel composed a pixel of Apple's retina display. So this whole um, um, picture on the right represents nine pixels from their new uh, 6000 retina display. Um, so the pixel um, the, this digital pixel contains three rectangular sub-elements in red, green, and blue to produce color. But when this pixel is overlaid on the full viola, um, you know, where you can find the uh, most um, you know, densely packed cones, um, you can place about 1,500 cones, uh, which are represented by as little granules. Um, uh, uh, here on the left. Since uh, most stimuli used in psychophysical experiments are generated using desktop computer and they are displayed on a CRT or flat panel monitors, you need to know how to calculate the pixel density of the display you use. So to do that, you need to find out the current pixel resolution setting of your display first. 
You can easily find this information when you go to display setting like the one shown here. So this is a screenshot of display setting from Apple's operating system. In this example, the monitor is set at the resolution, pixel resolution of 1600 by 1000, meaning that the display is divided by 1600 pixels horizontally and 1000 pixels vertically. And you can see there are several other resolution settings available for you to choose from. And since the physical size of the monitor does not change, so pixel density will change according to the current resolution setting of your choice. So for example, if the width of your monitor is 20 inches, as shown here, then the pixels per inch across the PPI, across the display, uh, when the resolution is 1600 by 1000, then the PPI of this monitor is, um, so that's, 1600 across by 20 inch, so that is 80. So we have 80 PPI, right, for this monitor. So it is important that you report at what display resolution you ran your experiment along with the size of your monitor when you run a psychophysical experiment on a digital, digital display because it changes your pixel density, uh, which in turn will affect the size dimensions of your visual stimulus you display on the screen. However, uh, what matters more to vision scientists is the extent of retinal image, regardless of the viewing distance. So, they frequently use visual angle rather than matrix or imperial system to measure the size of the object in a visual scene to directly refer to the size of the image projected on the retina. That way, we do not need to state both extent of an object and viewing distance at the same time. So all that matter is the extent of an image falls on the retina, regardless of the viewing distance. And more formally, we can derive the equation to calculate the visual angle when given the viewing distance and the side of an object using the simple trigonometric relations. So here, um, h is a side of an object, right? and alpha is the visual angle that we try to uh, estimate. And then d here, d is the viewing distance and this is the this is what we want to convert into the alpha so we can use the um, the tangent rule here right so tangent rule here is so this is tangent when the angle here is alpha over 2 right so then tangent alpha over 2 is uh, opposite, which is half of h. So that's um, h over 2 and d, right? And d, that's opposite over adjacent. So that is actually the tangent relations we can use, right? Tangent uh, alpha over 2 equals h over 2d, right? So we're going to um, rearrange this equation for alpha because alpha is what we're trying to estimate. So you this become alpha over 2, and you just do the inverse tangent uh, to both sides to get to remove the tangent on the left. So that's 2d, right? So therefore, alpha, and then now 2 goes to this side, and that's 2 inverse tangent, 
h over 2d. So that is how you calculate the visual angle, right? Uh, it may be different from what you learned uh, in other classes, but this is kind of a formal way to calculate the visual angle. So once you convert the size of the object into visual angle, then now we can calculate the pixel density in degree visual angle. Okay, now let's calculate the um, pixels per degree of a monitor. So here we are given uh, 1600 pixels as a horizontal pixel resolution. So that is 1600 pixels. Right, and the size, the width of the monitor is 50 centimeters. And viewing distance here is 100 centimeters, which is a meter. So now, if we just use the relation, right? So that um, alpha equals, shoot, equals 2 times tangent inverse tangent h over 2d. So now um, let's just calculate this part first. Right? That's first. That's h. Well, not in this case now. W. We can just use W as, and that's two times hundred. So that's two hundred. So that is ten. One over. Or so um, in my calculator, so that is point two four five uh, rounded to the um, three decimal places. Now, because this is in radian, right? You have to multiply this by. 180 divided by pi. Oops, pi, yeah. To convert this into angle. So that becomes 14.5 That's okay, so that's in degree. Now that is only this part. So you have to multiply two. So that is 28 degrees. That's about 28 degrees, right? Because this is 28.08, right? So let's say this is just a 28 degrees. And then now, so that 50 centimeters, right, of the monitor is um, subtend 28 degrees from a meter away. Now, the all you have to do now, so I'll just erase this. Given that this is 28 degrees, so alpha is 28 degrees. Alpha is 28 degrees, so you PPD becomes 1600 over 28 degrees. So that's about 57 pixels per degree. Okay, so that's how you calculate the pixels per degree of a monitor. Um, you probably know the rule of thumb that the width of your thumbnail is um, approximately subtend, subtending two degrees of visual angle on your retina at your arm's length. So here are some other handy rules that had been used by 
astronomers or stargazers thousands of years ago. So next time, um, we will talk about the, the actual psychophysical stimuli used in the psychophysical experiment.